Hello, glad to have you with me. In this two-part video series, first we're going to explore some basics of what helps or hinders the storage of fruits and vegetables. And then in the second video, we're going to explore the most common fruits and vegetables. And I'm going to give you some purchasing te techniques, holding techniques, do's and don'ts when it comes to trying to get the longest possible shelf life out of your fruits and vegetables before they go bad. So let's dive in and get started. So the agenda is we're going to talk about these four things the most in part one, time, temperature, moisture, and air circulation. Ethylene gas, which I call the wild card, we'll briefly discuss and I'll dive more into it when we do the second video. And I'm actually at my refrigerator, at my house with common fruits and vegetables. And then we're gonna talk about actually purchasing storage tips and techniques for the most common fruits and vegetables, um, starting with today's video, but then going into the second video. So when we talk about those four, time, temperature, moisture, and air circulation, and the wild card ethylene gas, we're talking about your home refrigerator. In the restaurant industry, we have huge refrigeration, sometimes as big as a room in your house or multiple rooms in your house that is has a big condenser and one or several fans. And because we're buying things in bulk, we don't necessarily store the large amount of produce or vegetables or fruits in, because they're in cases, the way that I'm going to describe in the second video. So just keep that in mind because the way you store it at home in your home refrigerator is different than what you would store in a food service restaurant setting. And I also know many of you have different types of refrigerators. If you can, and you have the latest and best and it has smart technology, you're probably a little less concerned with some of the uh, time, temperature, moisture, and air circulation. If you have a traditional or no frills refrigerator, or if it's several years old, that's when you really have to pay a little bit more um, attention to those four things we're gonna discuss in this video. So let's start with time. We're talking from time when we're talking about pre-purchase. So from the time it leaves the farm or the factory or the field harvesting, through the shipping process from the farm field to wherever it's going, a grocery store, a food warehouse, or a food distributor. Most fruits and vegetables that are temperature sensitive are um, shipped on trains, ships, or tractor trailers that have atmospherically controlled environments. So hopefully from the time your, your item was purchased, excuse me, picked or harvested, it is uh, starting with the time and temperature from that point. Then we may have shipping from a distributor to the supermarket, and maybe you're buying it from a farmer's market where maybe for a certain period of time, temperature and time are a little bit altered because they're displaying their product and it's not like a supermarket where they have huge display cases. And most fruits and vegetables are meant to be or have the ability to be stored at room temperature for periods of time. And then storage from the supermarket or the farmer's market, and then handling the whole process and specifically what you do once you get it home. Temperature at home, the FDA suggests that you keep your refrigerator at least 40 degrees or below. Most refrigerators, once again, the older, the more uh, common it is, that the hottest temperature, the warmest temperature is gonna be at the top of your refrigerator and the cooler temperature is gonna be at the bottom. And when we talk about air circulation, air circulation has a lot to do with how consistent the temperature is from top to bottom. It is good to double check your refrigerator's thermometer or display, or if you're like my refrigerator, you're gonna see it has a one through seven scale. In the second video, I'll share a little bit about how to make sure that what you think the temperature is or what it's displayed is actually the right temperature. Next, we have moisture. Fruits and vegetables naturally have a lot of moisture. Some fruits and vegetables are 95 plus percent moisture. 
But we also add the factor that when you open the refrigerator door or your kids open the refrigerator door and they're looking for something, depending on the environment, whether it's a dry environment or a moist environment, they're either taking moisture out of the refrigerator or putting moisture into the refrigerator. So it is always good to make sure that you're not, not only for temperature holding the door open for long periods of time, but also for moisture. As you'll see in the next video, moisture can be both a friend and an enemy to certain fruits and vegetables, which will determine how long they're safe, fresh, and ready to eat, or at the best quality of them to be ready to eat, to be eaten, and that you don't actually throw them away. Most of us have some sort of drawer or drawers um, in a refrigerator that are supposed to control the crisp or the crisp uh, drawer is supposed to control the humidity level. Some of you like mine have a slide that says fruits and vegetables. Some refrigerators actually say higher humidity, medium humidity, low humidity. But a key thing to remember is if it tends to rot, they like a low, they're low humidity. And if they tend to wilt, they're high humidity. So in the column where it says high, it's sensitive to moisture loss and sensitive to ethylene gas, which once again is a wild card. And you can see some common things that you would want to make sure um, you have in the right place. Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage and cauliflower, peppers, herbs, leafy greens. So when you think about leafy greens, you would think that you want them to have, they should be in high humidity. And that is correct. So you want to make sure that they're stored in the CRISPR drawer where it says high humidity or um, fruits or vegetables, depending on how yours is set up. And then low would be apples, avocados, honeydew, melons, cantaloupes, etc. Airflow. You don't want to overpack your refrigerator. So if you do a big shop and you go and you start packing a lot of things in your refrigerator on all shelves, this is going to restrict the airflow. Every refrigerator is a little bit different of how and where it, it distributes air, the cold air. So you wanna make sure that A, the vents or the fans are not blocked, but also that you're not overstocking the refrigerator, which is gonna cause the air to not be able to flow all through the refrigerator. And once again, maybe causing warmer spots or cooler spots. When you reduce airflow, it can, it'll produce those inconsistent temperatures. But another thing that you should do is pull your refrigerator out from the wall and clean the vents behind. Not only will that keep it more energy efficient, but it'll also help um, keep your refrigeration, the airflow properly and the temperature held properly. Okay, the wild card. And I got this information from UCSD uh, Community Health. And as you can read on the screen, ethylene gas is released by fruits and vegetables, um, causing product uh, produce to ripen faster. So, down where it says, what can I do? Uh, you do store fruits and vegetables that are producing ethylene ga gas with those that are sensitive to ethylene gas. For example, do not store bananas and apples next to each other. So in the next video, I'll share once again, what produce uh, um, items or fruits have a lot of ethylene gas. But in general, think about bananas. If you get green bananas, you put them in a paper bag, they're gonna ripen quicker. So if it's producing ethylene gas and you want um, to put it with um, ethylene gas sensitive, which is uh, in the red, where it's apples, avocados, bananas, grapes, et cetera, you wanna make sure you're storing things properly. And once again, I'll dive a little bit more into that in the next video when I do some common fruits and vegetables that we have in most of our households. And then ethylene producers is the next good thing to know, apples, avocados, bananas, cantaloupes, kiwis, peaches, pears, tomatoes. And then not ethylene sensitive are things that ethylene gas really isn't going to have an impact on. So that is the wild card, because sometimes if we're trying to store stri strictly by humidity, you're going to be putting something that's ethylene sensitive with an ethylene producer. So um, there are times that you have to make your best judgment of how to store things appropriately to get the longest shelf life and the freshest product you to have and be able to eat. So that was the first video. Um, I look forward to seeing you in the second video after I go supermarket shopping and buying some of these things. I'll bring them home and share once again some things to look for in the supermarket and best practices once you get them home. See you next video.